Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Act on Mental Health. My name is Sean and I'm a licensed mental health counselor here in the state of Indiana. And I love to use ACT and RFT principles with clients to help them in their therapy. Now today I got something special for you. We're gonna be talking about the ABCs of metaphor creation, how to do a functional analysis. Now, if you're looking to get better at using metaphors in therapy, you're in the right place. This video is perfect for students studying counseling, or maybe you're in a practicum or internship, or a therapist just starting out. Really, anyone who's curious about ACT and using metaphors in therapy. Now, we're going to learn how to pick apart behavior to make really good metaphors that help in therapy. Previously, I introduced metaphors in ACT and R of T and the concept of source and target with metaphors as well as the three principles that guide metaphor creation from Nicholas Tornicki's book, Metaphors and Practice. Now we're ready to move on and see how understanding behavior can make our therapy metaphors even stronger. Let's begin with a more advanced concept for ACT therapists, and let's talk about what functional analysis really means in the world of therapy, especially when we're talking about ACT and RFT. These videos are made to keep things simple while also taking complex ideas and trying to break them apart. So you're going to get stretched here, but stay with me and I'll try to make it as easy to understand as possible. A functional analysis, you know, it might sound a little bit technical, doesn't it? But it's actually pretty simple and super useful. Think of it as being a detective in a mystery novel where the mystery is why we do the things that we do, especially the things that keep us stuck or unhappy. In the simplest terms, a functional analysis is about looking closely at behaviors, what we do, and figuring out two main things. What's happening right before we do them and what's happening right after we do them. Now let's break apart this in a simple ABC fashion. And we're gonna actually start with B. B stands for behavior, what we do or don't do. The A stands for incidents, what triggers the behavior? What happens prior to the behavior? And then we're gonna look at C for consequences. What happens after the behavior? The cool part about performing a functional analysis in therapy and especially in crafting metaphors is that it helps us understand these behaviors, not just on the surface, but deeply in a way that connects with our experiences and emotions. It's about seeing the pattern the repeated scenes in our story, and then using what we find to create powerful, relatable metaphors that can help us change the script for clients. Now that we understand the ABCs of a functional analysis, let's look how it actually works in a therapy setting. It's kind of like you're at a crime scene and you're a detective and you're looking at every piece of evidence and you're going in a step-by-step -step fashion to try to solve the mystery. Step A is identifying the behavior. So first step, we need to figure out what behavior we're looking at. Now this could be something that you're doing, like playing a video game to distract from other important things you need to be doing, or maybe something you're not doing, like going to the gym, like you decided you wanted to do this year. Clients may miss important features of their behavior, so it's helpful to ask about what they're doing or not doing from the therapist's perspective. So you might ask, what would I see you doing here? And if you're doing that, what would I notice you're not doing here? Step B is to understand the context. Now next, we need to look at what happened before the behavior took place. Now, what were some of the triggers? What happened immediately before? Now, this could be something someone said to them in a particular situation or our own thoughts, feelings, memories, and sensations. This is more of an assessment where we're gathering information. So refrain from getting distracted with hypothesis about what's going on for the client. That's for a later time. Don't just ask what happened before the behavior, but try to get into the qualitative, subjective world of the client, meaning questions should be framed from the client's perspective. So you can ask, what was going on for you before you were doing this? And you could follow up with, and what were you doing then as this was going on? This will provide useful content for targets. Step C is linking to metaphor targets. So now we're gonna connect the dots. You know, how does this behavior in its context help us find a good target for our metaphors? This is where your creativity comes in. So we're gonna be looking for those aha moments that can make a metaphor really stick. 
So let's look at the consequences. Now consequences could be something immediate, like feeling relieved or long-term, like missing out on opportunities. So we really wanna help the client to see the short-term benefits as well as the long-term costs. And it is super important to do this in a non-judgmental and supportive tone. This step-by-step -step approach doesn't just help us understand our clients better, it gives us a powerful way to communicate with them using metaphors that resonate deeply with their experiences, where they sense they are being seen and heard. As you practice this ABC method, you'll find that it becomes second nature, transforming the way that you connect with and help your clients navigate their challenges. And that's the real power of a functional analysis and therapy is it helps you to see all the evidence and to begin to make some hypothesis on how you can solve this particular issue. Moving forward, let's apply the principles from Nicholas Tornicki's book, Metaphors in Practice, and these insights that he has to enhance our metaphor creation process and therapy. Now, Tornicki outlines three essential principles that can significantly inform our approach. The first we've talked about already, and that's a functional analysis for identifying metaphor targets. First, a thorough functional analysis helps us understand the behaviors and emotions of our clients. This step is crucial for identifying specific areas where metaphors can be effectively applied. For instance, if a client consistently avoids challenging situations, we might see this behavior as avoiding stepping into a cold shower. The analysis directs us to pinpoint behaviors and emotions that are primed for metaphorical representation, making the metaphors relevant and powerful. The second principle to inform metaphor creation is establishing observational distance. Now, the second principle focuses on using metaphors to help clients view their thoughts and emotions from a new perspective. By framing their experiences in metaphorical terms, clients can achieve a degree of separation, allowing them to observe their actions and feelings more objectively. This distance can deflate overwhelming emotions or behaviors, rendering them more manageable and less intimidating. The third and final principle that Tornicki lays out for building metaphors is clarifying life priorities through metaphors. So Tornicki highlights the importance of aligning metaphors with the client's values. This alignment ensures that the metaphors not only resonate with the client's experience, but also guide them toward actions that reflect these values. For example, if a client values growth, but feels hindered by past failures, a metaphor such as pruning back old branches to promote new growth can illustrate the importance of letting go to move forward. In integrating these principles into our metaphor creation, we focus on crafting metaphors that not only mirror the client's experience, but also facilitate a deeper connection with their values and aspirations. This approach fosters a therapeutic environment where metaphors serve as a catalyst for insight and change. By grounding our metaphors in the reality of our clients' lives and aspirations, we empower them to envision and pursue a path that resonates with their deepest values. In summary, by understanding the behavior of our clients using an ABC functional analysis and creating space using metaphors that can provide objective observation and connect them with their values, we unlock avenues for growth and healing. Now in the next video, I'll be covering more of the larger sense of metaphors that we can draw from. So we'll talk about conceptual metaphors as well as emotional metaphors. And it's sort of like a big lake and using the right hook and bait to find the right metaphor for our use for clients. Now, I encourage you to look further into Nicholas Tornicki's work, especially metaphors in practice, for more in-depth insights and examples. His guidance can significantly enhance your therapeutic toolkit. If you found this video helpful and would like to explore more about ACT, RFT, and the use of metaphors in therapy, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. Your support helps me to continue to provide valuable content and share ACT approaches with a wider audience. Remember your journey towards a more purposeful and mindful life starts with a single click.